Hi, and welcome back to another Magical Voxel video. This one is going to be pretty short, but uh, I would like to cover a more in-depth version of a video that I uploaded earlier in my YouTube career, which is on lighting. So let's get to it. So as you can see, I've listed several examples on the different purposes of light that could be used in Magical Voxel. Let's go ahead and go through them one by one. First things first, when you go to the render setting right here, you want to enable bloom. That gives it a sort of a pop, which is more realistic in the real world. For instance, when bloom was off, I'm trying to imitate the sunlight coming in, and it doesn't really look right because there's a hard edge against the window and the actual outside world. And we turn on bloom it looks like there's a like sunlight coming in uh, another thing to note is the wall right here if i press alt and left click you can see i grabbed that color on the color palette and if i go into the matter section i've given it, it a metallic shader with um, these settings here roughness and ior this is because um, not all rooms are just like a map there's some sort of reflection giving off of the walls as i've noticed in life so that's important to note pressing and holding alt and left clicking right here you can see i've had a emission sh shader for this color which i labeled the sun and i've given it emission 94 with a power of three I usually don't go any higher than this because if you go higher you can see it becomes overly obsessively bright even with bloom disabled and it just doesn't look realistic in my opinion but you can always play around these are the settings that I think work but magic box is all about experimenting here in this scene you can see I have a like nightstand lamp that's on the ground and you can see how the light is behaving it's somewhat realistic because there's light coming out here, it's bouncing off the walls, and most of the lights concentrate down here. You can see I've selected the um, lamp bulb that's inside here, and I've given it emission power four with a uh, 100 on the emission, and that's because most of the light is blocked by this, um, by the, the like. What do you call it? The lamp, the lampshade? Yeah. Most of it's blocked by the lampshade. So if I bring this down, you can see this maybe three works, but this still doesn't look that realistic. So I set it at four. Over here, I have a simple exit sign. A important thing to note is that if I select this color right here, I turn LDR on. If I put this to zero, you could see it's quite bright for an exit sign it's an exit sign supposed to be visible like in a dark room or something if the power goes out but it's not supposed to be like blinding bright so I, if you turn this on it basically gives steam still the same amount of power but it the actual block isn't like lit up so to say you can see that working right here uh, another thing to note is if I go over to fog in the um, show lighting settings down here, you can click this and it opens up some more tools for you to change. If you put fog density of one, it sort of gives it darkens everywhere else, but it makes the light pop more. So if you want something to glow more, you can turn on fog. Over here you can see in this example I have a wall mounted light and the power is set to, it's almost like the lampshade where the power is set to 4 emissions basically at 100 and you can see the light behaving differently because most of the light is being blocked by this bar right here and it's aiming down basically and hitting off the wall so it's giving the impression of like a wall lamp. In this one, I basically made a cylinder where this outside gray bit is glass and the inside is a 
basically like a light rod. If I go over to render, you want to go over to these three bars and for anything related to glass, you want to turn these settings on. So you can see it looks kind of weird. It's kind of like jello and there's like some light in the middle. But if I left click alt, uh, click this right here, it grabbed the basically the corresponding color and if you give it basically a simple IR you can see it completely changes the how the light behaves and you can turn on roughness and you can see it's looking a lot cooler and you can definitely use this to your advantage and make some cool stuff out of it. Lastly I have a simple scene where there's a TV mounted on the wall in the room um, selecting this color right here obviously it's an emission shader um, the power is set quite low anything higher I feel will be too bright TV at night is supposed to be bright but not too bright obviously I and mean, I think this is the perfect balance I've given it an LDR because without it it's a little bit too bright so I uh, set it with an LDR and down here you can see there's a light um, so you could turn on LDR for this, or you can actually mess with these col the color right here. Value and saturation have play a big impact on how bright and vibrant the light will be. So down here, if I keep everything the same, but lower saturation, you can see it looks brighter than it does before because it's getting closer to white. And same with value. Value really changes the brightness. So if I bring this down, you can see this is getting a lot dimmer and dimmer. And I put this all the way here, it's really bright. So this actually, um, you can mess with stuff up here and mess with stuff down here. So hopefully this video has helped and I'll see you all in the next one.